Hello everybody, Baconator back once again for another Smite Tactics video. Today we will be going over the final part of my tier list videos, and we will finish off with the neutral card, so let's get started. So first off, there are a lot of neutral spells in the game. A bunch of like small spells, nothing like too big, but let's see what they are. First one we have Blink. Zero mana, so you can play this for free at any time. Move a friendly or enemy up to three spaces away. This is an alright card. It's not anything special, but it's, it's good, you know? It was recently buffed. It used to be two spaces. Now it's three, so that makes it a little bit better. But most of the time, though, this card is not going to be really used. This is basically a worse teleport, but it also can be used for um, the other pantheons while teleport's exclusive to Greek. So it, it's good in that regard. But right now, there are just ultimately better cards that you want to put in your deck and Blink really has no space in most decks. Next we have Purification, another zero mana spell. Remove all crowd control effects from a friendly unit. This is pretty much in the same boat as Blink. It's just not really good enough. It, ta it fills a purpose, it can be good, but most of the time it's really just not good enough to actually put in any decks. There's better cards to put in. So, how can this card be good? Well, for one, it can be good if you say you you get Cataclysm to um, stun in, a w in other ways. Then you can use Purification for free, and then suddenly that character can be used again instead of just being stunned to alter. So in that regard, it can be good. But it, but like I said before, it's just there's not really a reason to put it in any decks right now currently. Maybe in the future there will be, but for now, no. Now we have our first neutral minion, Fire Imp. One mana, two, one. That's two attack, one health, and pardon effect. So we talked about pardon before. They do not receive return damage, which is very good because with, because then if you attack, then you can with this card then you do two damage to free for every to whatever you hit. Now, this card is not good though. So if pardon's a good effect, then why is this card not good? First reason, it's a melee character. So while it can move through three spaces instead of two, unlike most cards. Two, um, one health with a melee character is just very bad. Most of the time, it's just going to be killed off by the enemy leader for free if it's a Zeus or a Ra. Of course, if you're playing a Norse Pantheon, then they might not be able to, but even then, you can just put any sort of ranged minion, like say for the Norse Pantheon, a Cursed Hunter. And if you're not playing the Norse Pantheon specifically, then this card is just going to be completely useless because the leader will easily be able to remove it. So while the pardon effect is good, this card, because it's melee and only has one health, it's not good. Now we have Fist of the Gods, one mana, spell, stun an enemy, simple as that. This card is probably the best low cost spell right now in the neutral set, I would believe, because stun is definitely a strong effect and I can see this being used in some sort of control deck type of decks. Not aggressive decks, but definitely control decks and mid-range decks. What's so good about stun is that it basically just stops that enemy from doing absolutely everything you throw at it. So if there's a minion with taunt, you use Fist of the Gods on it, and then you're not taunted anymore. If the minion has a, um, let's see. If it's a ranged character just in general, you use stun on it. And then it can no longer give you return damage. So that's also good. So it basically gives every to a stunned enemy everything you have as part and regardless if it's melee or range, which is good. And also it all, doesn't allow them to move at all. So it's similar to taunt in that regard where they can't move. But stun is just a better taunt basically. And since it's only one mana, it's a good card. So yeah, I like Fist of the Gods. Now we have Sunder, one mana, deal two damage for enemy god or minion. This is also probably up with Fist of the Gods with as a really good low mana neutral spell. Because Sunder is hard removal. It's it's there's very few removal in this game so far because obviously it's been out for a very short time. There's not that many cards in it. So right now Sunder is very good because it gives any character in, in the game a chance to remove something they wouldn't be able to remove otherwise. So Sunder you can probably expect to see one or two of these and practically all decks that are in the game right now except maybe like very specific decks that are trying to be hard aggro or maybe like a 
OT or one turn kill deck. So yeah, Sunder is a card that is a staple right now in the game, and you're going to have to deal with it. Very good card. You should run it if you have it. Now we have Thorns, 1 mana, increase the friendly god or minions return damage by plus 2. So basically, if something attacks this, un unless it has Pardon, of course, then it's going to receive extra damage when you attack it. But the problem is with Thorns is that's not very good. Why is it not very good? Well, it can be good in some aspects. Say you put it on like a taunt minion, then it's great because then you, they can't really do much to a taunt minion. But that's only in the Greek class specifically. How else can it be good? It can be good with some ranged characters, so if they try to remove a ranged character, they're going to take a little bit extra damage back, which is nice. But most of the time, it's not going to be very good. Because if you ever use it on a melee character, it's bad. And if you ever use it on... When, they ha when the enemy has a pardon effect, then it's bad. And unfortunately, those situations come up a little too much for this game. So because of that, Thorns is not very good, and I haven't seen really anyone using it at all since I've been playing. And I don't think they should. I think they're correct to not use it, because I don't think it's very good. Next we have a Basilisk, a 2 mana, 2, 3 minion. Basic attacks root enemies until the start of your next turn, but root does right here, unable to move. So with root, it can do everything else except move, basically. Basilisk is probably not going to be a good card in the future, but right now it is. Why is it a good card? Because there are very few two drops in the game, and Basilisk fits that role perfectly as a nice early game unit that you can play whenever you like. No, Basil, it's it's nothing special on its own, but just right now it's really good because of that. It's a two drop, so Basilis is good because of that. There's really no other reason why it's good. The root effect is kind of just whatever. It's a melee card, so it's not that good. And aspect stats are just meh. But because it's a two drop, everyone's playing it, and they're right to do so. It's a good card right now, but probably not going to be one later on. Next we have Charge, a two mana spell. Give a friendly god or minion charge. What does charge do? Move and attack the turn it is spawned. So charge, it's a good card, you know? It's nothing, it's again one of the cards I think some people are putting in decks that don't really need it. But it has its purpose. This is one of the cards that we were talking about earlier where you want those combo decks. Where you suddenly just do an insane amount of damage to your opponent out of nowhere. Because what charge does, it lets you play that big minion. Then you give it charge so it can attack immediately, and then your opponent's suddenly taking 6 damage, 7 damage, or whatever, 5 damage, just out of nowhere. From your hand, basically. So that, in that regard, charge is good. Now, is it good in just normal decks that aren't trying to just one turn kill you? I would say mostly no. It can have some purpose if you're giving it to a card with a pardon effect or a ranged character hitting a melee character really quickly. It can be good then. But most of the time, it's not going to be that useful. So, I like it in some aspects. The combo decks are really good. But besides that, I don't think it's that good. As it may seem. Next, we have Pardon. Two mana spell. Give a friendly Pardon. We've talked about Pardon before and what it does. So this card, how do, how do I word this? This is a card that looks extremely good. But the problem is, it's not really now, I have found a use for this card, and that is in the Norse Pantheon. Because with the Norse Pantheon, you can buff up your leaders to higher attack values. And once you give them those higher attack values, you also give them this card, and then they can your leaders can attack for those higher damage numbers for free. Now, of course, they will if they get attacked, then they won't. But this is where Pardon I have found is actually good. But in most other cases, it has not been really good. Because... It can be good to keep a minion alive and maybe kill a minion while keeping yours alive, so it can't have the value in that aspect, but right now I haven't seen it really being used where they may use it and kill off something, but then normally that just gets killed off and then that pardon effect's gone, which is bad. So I like it in the Norse Pantheon, but everywhere else I haven't really seen it be used that good. So that's where my take on it so far. Now we have Sentry Ward, 2 mana spell, draw a card from your opponent's deck. This card sounds really good, but it's in play, it really sucks. 
Now, so basically this is two mana, steal a card from your opponent's deck, so they have less cards, and then you draw a card at the same time from that deck. So you're kind of removing a card from your opponent and adding a card to you. Now that sounds really good, right? Well, not really, because it costs two mana first off, and if you draw something bad, then you're literally using two mana just to draw something bad, and that's bad. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, this card, it just looks really good because you're stealing that card away, but in play it just doesn't really do anything special, you know? And I've seen lots of players use this card, and most of the time, whatever card they steal from me, it's either they play it and it wasn't that good, or they just don't play it at all, and it because they need to play other better stuff that they got. Yeah, you can draw something really good. You can steal, say, like an Athena from the Greek deck, or um, a Ymir, or a Loki from the Norse deck, or a Neith from the um, uh, the Egyptian deck. But most of the time, you're not going to be stealing that. You're going you're to be stealing some crappy 2-drop, or maybe a 3-drop if you're lucky. So Ascension's Ward is not that good of a card. Especially because so many people are playing it, they need to stop playing it because it's not that good. Now we have Shell. Two mana, all friendlies in target area receive one less damage until the start of your next round. So it's basically the Aphrodite effect or the Spartan effect built into one. Now the target area is a 2x2 two two, as we've seen in a lot of these target area types of spells. So you can't hit up to four of your friendlies for this one less damage for a turn, which is good if you're able to. You can stop damage and then you can't reattack so basically if you're playing like an aggressive Norse deck they have some cursed warriors out some cursed hunters out you pop shell and then those guys are effectively useless unless they have like a frenzy or something in which case then this card gets completely terrible but again it's one of those cards that have you seen a lot in all these neutral spells where it's just too situational and that situation is normally this card won't make a huge turnaround swing in the game so again, Shell, not that good. It may be good in some areas, but not enough areas. Now we have another minion, Elder Harpy, 3 mana, 3-2 three, with Pardon. So Elder Harpy is a very interesting card. This card used to be pretty much the best card in the game recently until they nerfed her. What did they nerf? They nerfed the health. It used to be a 3-3, three, three, but now it is a 3-2 three, with Pardon. And that has actually hurt Elder Harpy significantly. For starters, it means that it's harder for her to actually get an attack off because she is a melee character. And now it's easier for a leader to just kill it off before it can get the um, attack off. So now it doesn't have that... The one thing it had going for it the most was that it almost always got that attack off because it had the 3 health. Now with the 2 health, it doesn't get that attack off nearly as much, which makes it not as good as it once was. I still think because of how limited the minions are in this game that Elder Harpy is still viable. You can play her because the three mana slot needs to have something in there and Elder Harpy fits that role nicely. But I think she will, once the more cards are added, she will fall out because the health is just not as good enough for the effect. Now we have Stairups, three mana, three, two, again. This time we have the effect deals one bonus damage to minions. This card is terrible. This card works well against one card, and that is the Brute in the Greek Pantheon, which is a 1-4 taunt, because this card is able to kill the Brute for free. Besides that, this card is absolutely terrible. It's a melee card, so the 2 health again is bad, and it basically gets one attack off, and then it dies immediately, because it does not have the pardon effect. And that's even if you're able to get that attack off. So yeah, this card is just a complete, just a straight up worse Elder Harpy, and you should never use it. Maybe they'll buff it at one point, and then it'll be useful, but right now, the effect is just not nearly as good as Pardon, and for the same stats, it's just a bad card. Now we have Temporal Beads, 3 mana, refresh all friendly god cooldowns. This is a very interesting card. Because I've never seen it be used before. It's a legendary spell, so as you can see from the craft cost. And I'm not sure how well how good it could be. It sounds like it can be good because refresh every single friendly god cooldown. So basically as a 
Let's see, as a Ymir, you can stun twice. As a uh, Medusa, you can execute twice. As an Athena, you can teleport twice. It's very, it can see, it sounds like it could be very good, but on the other hand, it doesn't seem like it will be that good because most of the effect, those effects, you only want to use once. You don't want to use it again on the same turn because this card doesn't make your movement of those gods refresh, only the cooldown itself. So say you do use a Ymir stun, and then you give a Temporal Beast, well, what, you're going to stun the same thing again? It's just impractical. Now, in certain situations, it can be used, right? But right now, I just don't see it quite being that good. I haven't seen it yet, so maybe it's great, and I'm just not sure. But for now, I don't think it's that good. Not quite good enough. Now, we have Stone of Gaia, double a god or a minion's health for four mana. This card is interesting because it sounds really good, but again, in play, it's very, very situational. So how does this card work well? It can work well with something with high health and low attack to just make it a complete tank. So say you put this on an Athena and she becomes a 212 with taunts. Well, basically, you just win the game because how are they going to deal with that? Unless they're, you're playing a raw with an execute or something. Then that's about the only time they'll ever be able to deal with that minion the whole game. Now, where else can this be good? Well, that's the problem with this card. It costs a lot of mana, and it's hard to actually play on the same turn you play one of the minions with high health. So, in that regard, it's not really good. And since most of the time when you play one of those high health minions, your opponent's probably going to start picking off that health, well, the doubling effect gets worse every time it takes damage. So, say you're the, you play your Brute of 1-4, and then it takes two damage, and you're trying, you're expecting to play Stone of Gaia the next turn to make it a one eight with taunt. Well, say then the opponent does two damage to it, and then it's a one two. Well, suddenly the Stone of Gaia is four mana, give two health to the character, which is terrible. So it's hard to play at the same time. It has that potential to be good, but right now it's not that good. Now we have another minion, Fury. Six mana, six attack, four health with pardon. So this card is very interesting because it's probably like the most damaging card in the game right now in terms of attack value. The health isn't that good, especially for that cost. The question with this card is, is the pardon effect good enough with it to make it worth playing? The answer to that is almost always no. Now why is that? Because it's a melee character, that's why. So if you don't, if all your opponent has to do is pick it off from afar and then it's gone and it does nothing, the pardon effect is useless. Now if you're able to get this to attack, it is very powerful. But the problem is for health, well it was with the, it is, now here, let's talk about this. The Elder Harpy I said was really powerful with three health, but Fury's bad with four health, why is that? thing is, it's because the Elder Harpy was 3 mana, this is 6 mana. You are expending a lot of mana to play this and you're expecting it to live. Well, with the Elder Harpy, you're playing it way earlier in the game. So there's going to be a lot less threats to actually deal with the Elder Harpy than there would be dealing with, the, with this Fury. So that's why I don't think the Fury is quite good enough. I still think you can use it in some decks, especially on the combo decks, the uh, one turn kill decks, because it does have the most attack damage in the game. But I don't think it's quite good enough right now to be played in common decks. Just your standard mid range control decks. Maybe you can play it if you don't have the next card we'll be talking about. Then you can probably play it until you get that card. But right now, the main card to have for your big card and your control decks is right here. The Fire Giant. 7 mana, 5 attacks, 7 health, and it has an aura effect, adjacent units, or all friendlies actually, I forgot. This is everything regardless of where it's played at. Gains plus 1 attack and plus 1 ability damage. I'm actually going to back out of the screen because he is being very annoying with his, like, breathing. So Fire Giant, 7 mana, 5 attack, 7 health, those are great stats, because not only does it have a lot of attack, it has an insane amount of health, which makes it an absolute bitch to deal with. 
On top of that, it has a very strong effect where every single friendly minion or leader, this also affects your leader as well, gains plus one attack and plus one ability damage. This card is incredibly powerful for a big threat late in the game. Not only does it have those great effects, it also it is melee, so of course, not quite as good. But with those stats, make up for the fact that it's melee. And especially with how good that effect is. Fire Giant is super powerful. It makes it buffs everything on your team. It's hard to deal with itself. The only way you're dealing with this most of the time is with the raw and his execute. But most of the time, as long as the game is pretty neutral, you're not already, you've not basically lost the game already. You're playing the fire giant, and your opponent's not going to be able to deal with it. In a game where you're about even, fire giant completely turns the game around, and you basically win every time. If the, if you're way ahead, then fire giant just guarantees that he's not coming back. And if you're way behind, that's the only time fire giant's not good. The stats are extremely nice. The ability is great, and Fire Giant is a great card to have. So that concludes our tier list in Smite Tactics right now. I will, of course, every time there is a patch or a new update for the game that adds cards, then I will be discussing what the changes and what I think of them. And soon I will start posting actual gameplay footage of the game on my channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.